Hey guys, it's a rainy day here. My baby is sleeping. She's not such a baby anymore. Did you guys see the video of her that I did? And I compared it to the very first video I ever did with her where she's just so tiny and squirmy. And now she's so much bigger. Anyway, she's down for a nap and everybody's just having some chill time, some play time and school is done for the day. So I thought I would pop on here and do a little bit of makeup with anyone who's interested in joining me. But I wanted to show you how easy it is to do your makeup with these two brushes because a lot of times I do my makeup with this one the 3D brush, which is fabulous for doing your whole face, for sure. But I love this brush, the blush and bronzer brush. I've been using it a lot yesterday and I haven't cleaned it yet, but that's okay. Um, this is a great brush for doing your whole face and it comes together as a set with the bronzer, which is a summer staple. Everybody wants that for the summertime. And so you can get that together with the bronzer and the bronzer ends up being like $5. So this brush is $51. It's two brushes in one, and just like all our brushes. And it's super soft and so nice. It's one of my favorites. But then the bronzer is $20 normally, and you get both for $56. So it's really a fantastic deal. If you go under the collections, I love a good deal. So that's a really great one. You can even start with this brush rather than the 3D brush if you're interested. And then I love this multitasker brush because it does so many different things. Um, I love the line brush and you guys see me use that a lot for my eyebrows, eyeliner and that kind of stuff. But you can also use the multitasker brush for that. Plus you can do so many more things with it. So I'm just going to show you one way you could use it. So instead of applying with my fingers today, I'm actually going to apply my, uh, pack with the multitasker brush. So right now I'm just applying candlelit, which is, you can tell, like you can see it because this makeup is very condensed and highly pigmented, but this is the shade that's going to blend in with my skin the best. This is my main shade, okay? And I'm just kind of dotting it around. And this is the color that's going to give the most coverage because it's the it's not super dark, but it's the one that matches my skin. And out of all the shades in my skin, this one is darker than my other highlights. So this is my brightening highlight linen. And my skin actually is more that color in the winter. But in the summertime, I do have, everybody has lots of shades of color in their skin, right? Um, and I do have those linen shades, but there are fewer of them. Actually, you know what? I am gonna apply a little bit of color corrector too today because I have quite a bit of darkness under my eyes. So if I wasn't going to do this, I would just use that darker shade in this area. Oh, I heard a scarlet. Somebody must have taken her out. She's calling to me. Just when I think I have time. Okay, so I'm actually gonna apply a little bit of mango. <laughs> Hi, scarlet. Oh dear. Mango is an orangey shade, not too orangey. It's actually a great shade for color correcting. This is mango right here. And this one is really great if you have discoloration under your eyes, um, because usually we have kind of like bluey purple under our eyes and that slightly orangey shade is gonna counteract that because orange is opposite to blue and purple on the color wheel. <laughs> oh, Scarlet. But I also have a little bit of a purpley blemish right here. And uh, people don't realize a lot of times that blemishes have a lot of blue in them. We just think red when we think of pimples, right? But actually, unless it's really a fresh, brand new pimple, just coming to a head, as gross as that may sound, that's when you're gonna see more red, but usually there's quite a bit more blue in it than you would think. And so an orangey tone, believe it or not, counteracts that um, quite well. So, because blue and orange are opposite on the color wheel. So yeah, if you have any color correction, you might like a shade like mango to kind of make those things disappear. But anyways, everywhere else you're gonna apply, can you guys hear her? Everywhere else you're going to apply the main shade, okay? And I'm just slopping it around. It doesn't really matter where you put it. I mean, it matters, but it doesn't matter if it's perfect because we're gonna blend it all anyways. And then I'm going to take my contour, which is ash. And I'm going to start my contour 
right where my ear connects to my face, I'm gonna feel, that's where you can normally find your cheekbone. I'm gonna take that and I'm going to just bring that down and then I'm going to curve it under my cheek here in towards my nose. I have a pretty long nose. Usually you would stop your contour, you would have it angling towards the bottom of your nose, but if you have a very long nose, um, you could curve it more like towards your, nos or your nostril, like right here, okay? So I'm gonna curve that under like this and I'm stopping this contour basically right at the outside of my iris or even at my uh, pupil. So if you're wondering kind of how far to take that, I wouldn't take it any farther in than that. Normally I say the outer corner of the eye because when you blend, it's gonna come over a little bit more, but no farther than, than here, like the outer corner of your iris, I would say, okay? And I've been posting some different graphics lately that show you different ways to contour for your face shape, you know what, those are kind of fun and I enjoy them, especially um, when I'm doing makeup artistry. I like to study those things and figure that out, but just for like optimal things and ways to play with it. But I think it can also be a little confusing for people and overwhelming when they start thinking, well, what face shape am I? And I don't know, and now everything just gets a little bit more complicated. And honestly, if you do this placement, everybody can use this placement, no matter what your face shape, seriously and so i definitely recommend you start this way and then you get used to it you get used to your face and you kind of learn what highlighting and contouring even does for your face and then you might start branching out and playing with it a little bit depending on your face shape and what you're trying to achieve but honestly this method is going to be flattering on everybody okay the reason that we want to highlight and contour is because we want to give a 3D look to your face because you have a 3D face. You don't have a flat face, right? And traditional makeup, um, liquids and powders, they dry the skin, they sit there and absorb the moisture from your skin. And so they accentuate fine lines and texture. They, because our skin isn't naturally all one color, putting only one color all over the face just whitewashes it, makes it look unnatural and one dimensional. And so going in and redefining the face and adding back that, that shadow doesn't look, it doesn't it look so natural the way I'm doing this right now, but honestly, when it's done, it actually does look more natural. So we are sculpting and defining the face, chiseling out your features. I was um, talking to a client yesterday who is feeling really self-conscious because she's gained some weight over COVID, right? And a lot of people have. And I understand why, because we can't go anywhere and the gyms are closed and it's just hard, right? And so um, I'm breastfeeding, so that I've, I've almost lost too much weight actually. And I feel like contouring can actually help kind of boost my face depending on how I do it when I can look a little gaunt at other times. So just depending on what you're looking for, contour is gonna be super flatting, uh, flattering either way. But for people that are looking to slim the face, contour is great for that too. It's like Spanx for your face. It's fantastic, okay? It's just defining your features, which is very flattering. So you are wanting to define your natural bone structure, right? And so find those cheekbones, define that. Usually higher than you think is where you wanna put your contour. A lot of us were taught or kind of think, okay, you know, apples of the cheeks, you smile and then you put your contour below that. And that's not what I would recommend at all because wherever you put that contour above that is gonna be cheek. So if you have a line down here, then all this area is all cheek. And so maybe that's what you're looking for, but generally I think a more lifted look is very flattering. So this is basically like a little facelift with makeup. Okay, so there's your contour, okay? And you can also do your brows. Maybe I'll do that later. Um, the other thing you can do is define your lips. You can be super sloppy, that's okay. Give yourself a little bit more of a pout or more definition if you want to. Like that. You could do a little on top too if you want. All right, so that's that. All right, and then 
we're gonna add the brightener. So the brightener, a lot of people ask me, why would you use more than one color? And like I said before, we have more than one color in our skin. So you, it's more natural for one thing. It's also just super flattering to have a lighter, brighter shade in strategic areas, particularly around your eyes, because we usually have a lot of darkness. In this area here, we get a lot of darkness right? So brightening that up is very flattering because it just draws attention to the eyes. Usually we get quite dark around this area right here too. Okay. <laughs> I look crazy. And I like to extend this line here that I have straight down the nose, which just opens up the eye area, making this whole area way brighter and lighter and it pinches in the nose quite a bit because we want there to be shadow to define the nose, but we don't want shadow to just be like overtaking the face. So I keep this area beside the shadow nice and bright. And then I do brighten down the nose like this. <laughs> Maybe a little bit right here. And so there's basically like a sloppy diamond here in this dark dark line here. I'll put some brightener. Okay, and this is actually quite a bit of makeup I now have on my face. You don't even have to put this much on, okay? But basically, there's like a diamond of light here dotted in the center of the face, and then medium shade pretty much everywhere else other than where you have contour. And you don't have to layer this other than if you need a little bit of color correction. You don't have to layer because everything has coverage. So instead of just one shade of foundation and then layering makeup over makeup, you just place it where you want it. It's like finger painting or color by numbers, and then you blend it all together. And these brushes are designed really well. So they do not um, pick up and hold excess product, which is one reason why you don't really have to worry too much about like cleaning it off in between and all of that. We do have a brush cleaning tile, which I find particularly uh, great for like um, when you're doing lips, like with the multitasker brush, if I was going to do my lips and then I wanted to use this put, to put foundation and I don't want to put lipstick on that area, obviously, I can clean it off on my brush cleaning tile, just rub it off. And that's just something that fits right into your palette. So it's very convenient. And it's also really nice for eyeshadow <clears throat> to switch between colors. But for the most part, like with your highlights, with your foundation, your highlights and your contours, you won't find you really need to because this brush is designed to blend the products without absorbing it all into the brush so that you're maximizing the value and your makeup is gonna last longer that way and it's gonna be very well blended. And I do love this brush. It just feathers things out so beautifully You'll notice that I did the lighter things first other than the nose. I'm gonna be a little bit more careful with that because it's a smaller, more detailed area. Um, I did the lighter areas first and then I'm going in around and doing the contours. Around the jaw area, you want to place it underneath. So you'll find you'll have to kind of do this and hopefully I'm not just showing you all of what's inside my nose right now. I apologize, you have to look up my nose. And I just kind of swirl this in circular motions. And it just blends really, really well. Okay, and then I'm gonna do my cheeks. Now I could also have applied my lip and cheek color before blending and I can just blend it all together. That is totally doable too. And then it's even faster. And when I'm not chatting, honestly, you can see in the video I did with Scarlett, this takes me like three minutes. This is super easy, quick makeup when I'm not gabbing and talking and all well, those are synonyms, but you know what I mean? It's just really, really, really fast and easy. Anybody can do it, I promise you. So this is the thing that really drew me to this makeup is the fact that I've always known what highlighting and contouring can do for the face. And I would always, always do that when it's like a wedding or an event that I'm doing makeup for. I know how flattering that is for a person. And the look on that woman's face when she sees herself 
with highlighting and contouring done well, it's just the best feeling. It's like a high seeing that woman just feel that instant con confidence boost and be like, look at me, right? And first of all, seeing how good this makeup is, that was like, are you kidding me? It's so beautiful. I've always known that um, cream makeup is the best because it actually looks the most like skin. When you're comparing it to liquid and powder foundations, it maintains that luminosity that skin has and it moves with the skin. So it doesn't settle in and look cakey and powdery and bleh. Um, so I already knew because when I used to do uh, commercials way back in the day, you know, with print, they would Photoshop everything to death. But with commercials, at least at that point, they didn't have the same technology for editing videos and making your skin look perfect when it really wasn't. And so cream makeup is what they would often use because it was the best for zooming up close and it's like a little filter for your skin. It's really, really good. But there weren't very many options for cream makeup at the time. So when I found out about Saint, which was mascara at the time, it was like, oh my goodness, I need to get my hands on that. Um, but anyways, the other thing about it, I'm going off on a rabbit trail here, and now I don't remember what I was saying. Oh, the other thing about it was, of course, the fact that it so brilliantly utilizes more than one color, which has always been the trick to highlighting and contouring. A brightening shade to lift the face and give you that dimension and that contour to sculpt. Um, but it's such a scary thing to try to teach someone how to do that with traditional makeup because they're usually trying to blend powders over top of liquids, which is so challenging, right? And, um, you know, they're having to go to Sephora and try to pick, pick a foundation and then pick a highlight and then pick a contour, all from these different brands that aren't necessarily gonna work well together and try to figure out how to do it and how to blend it well and buying all the tools for blending properly and all of that. So when I found out I could get it all in one compact and I could actually coach and teach women who have never ever tried highlighting and contouring before, or at least not, not successfully, and teach them how to do it themselves, I was like, this is like my passion. As far as work or jobs go, it's so, so awesome. I just love it. And I have loved the confidence boost that this has given to so many of my clients who never thought they could do makeup before and just wore mascara and just slathered their faces in foundation and didn't really know what they were doing, didn't feel confident, um, not just in makeup in general, but didn't feel confident in their own skin. You know, they would wear makeup because they had things that they were self-conscious about, but then they didn't really like the way they looked with makeup either. So this to me has just been like a game changer, not just for myself, but for others and the way that it makes others feel. The fact that I get to be a part of it has been so awesome for me, especially at a time when there's so much just sad blahness. Oh, there's some kids being not happy with each other downstairs. So this is the same brush. I was on a rabbit trail, sorry. This is the multitasker brush, again, same one that I applied everything with. And I'm just using it in my brows now with my contour, so multitasking products. You can get the line brush, which is specifically made for brows because it has a spoolie on one end but this one will also work if you're just looking to kind of get started and you're wondering what you can do that's going to give you the most bang for your buck this is a great little brush that's going to do a lot for you okay so now with this same blush and bronzer brush you can apply blush and bronzer so what's uh one color here that i really like i'm going to show you oh my goodness might have to stop and go in have a chat with somebody there. Usually I try to wait till after, but it's going on and on. Um, this is Desert Sunset, which is one of the ones, I, I don't know if I talk about this as often as I use it, but clearly it's one of my favorites. It's almost gone. I have another one that I just ordered to replace it. This is just a beautiful color. Great for lips and cheeks. I'm going through a screaming phase with my three-year-old. She has found her voice. She has normally been super quiet and uh, she's going through like a bossy stage where she's screaming, not at me, but at her siblings a lot. So if I'm not there, she starts to get into this like boss mode, three-nager. So 
I'm gonna have to address that when I get off, but I did wanna, I'm almost done, so I'm gonna finish this. That's Desert Sunset, okay? And I love this shade if I'm just looking for kind of a very subtle, natural look. It's a kind of a corally pink color, but a little more pink than coral, so it's nice even if you have cool toned skin. Um, and then, of course, you can apply bronzer if you want to add that to your palette. Again, this is a custom palette built for you, exactly how you like it. And so you can add what you want. You can get started with the basics and then add more as you like. So you don't have to get everything all at once. Get a compact, choose one that has room to grow so that, um, you know, that way there's no pressure to get everything all at once, even if you want to. But maybe budget doesn't allow it at the time right? And uh, you can just get one that has some room to grow and that way you've got empty space and when you feel like it you can always add more. If you live in the States shipping is always free which is amazing but if you're in Canada it's three dollars and 95 cents for shipping which is quite reasonable I think. And if it's if your order's over 125 it's free. So and if you run out of something then because it's a refillable magnetic palette, it's fantastic because you don't have to throw away your entire palette when you run out of the color that you like the best and you need to replace it. You just pop that tin out and replace that one thing, right? And you never have to get rid of it. So it's such a nice, it's very um, environmentally friendly, no waste. So when you're applying your bronzer, it's a bit different than contour, a lot different actually. And a lot of women, um, if they're going to contour at all, a lot of women contour with bronzer, not really knowing the difference kind of thing. And the difference is that contour is cool toned and adds shadow, at least cooler toned than bronzer. Um, it depends on if, if you have very warm skin, then your contour might be warmer than mine, but it's still designed to be a little cooler and add the shade of a shadow, like a natural shadow on your face, right? And I'm also going to take into account your brow color because if I can, I will match it to your brows so you can pull double, double duty like I have. But that's just meant to go and chisel out your features and sculpt your face and define it with shadow. Whereas um, bronzer is adding warmth and color to the skin, which is what so many of us are really wanting right now. I've never really worn as much bronzer as I do now with Saint because this makes it so easy because usually bronzers turn me orange, really orange and Traditionally, most bronzers that I've ever tried have like some shimmer in them. And so I think they look, on me, they look a little bit gaudy. Like I just look really fake. And um, even though I've gone kind of crazier with the bronzer today, oh, I don't know if you would agree, but if you don't know that I don't naturally tan, I think this looks like a pretty good tan, like a natural tan. And it's the same color for anyone. Bella Bronzer is the only bronzer that we carry and it looks good on everybody, in my opinion. So you're just putting that on the high places of the face and like I'm doing here, you can build it. So sometimes I just put a touch of it on, it just looks like I have a little bit of a glow and sometimes I go all out and basically bathe in it like I just have and make myself look way more tanned. So it just depends on what you're going for. It's buildable coverage, just like all the other creams. So it's very nice, same texture as everything else. The last thing I haven't talked about uh, is illuminator. That's one of my favorite things ever. Um, we have powder illuminators and we have cream illuminators. Some people want to avoid powder illuminators because they can be a little bit more tricky for mature skin. And our creams are not shimmery like the powders are. They're mostly just a kind of dewy and glowy. And so there's lots of options for these. This one's Angel, which is a bit pinky. The creams are definitely more subtle I usually show powder. I do have mature skin. Apparently anyone uh, in the 35 range and older is classified as mature in the skin and makeup world. So, I mean, I am showing signs of that. I have some fine lines developing now and all of that. But it's like, yeah, you can, you can see them. Um, but I still love Glamazing and I think that anyone can wear it honestly. However, if you want something safer and more subtle, then the creams are a beautiful choice and see how they just kind of catch the light as I move around and give me that dewy glow without necessarily looking makeup. -y. Now, if you don't want to go through and do like an eye look um, with eyeshadow and so on and you're wanting to keep things simple, 
Bella Bronzer can actually make a fantastic eyeshadow too. So here's Bella. And you can even wear our lip and cheek colors on your eyes. You can wear illuminators on your eyes. So if you wanted to, you can just kind of smear it on there. I should have showed it with this brush because that's what I was showcasing, but that's okay. You can do that and then you can just apply your mascara and you're done for the day, so kind of fun. Anyways, I meant to come on here and just show you a really quick look and then I was chatting and chatting. My kids are no longer yelling which is great. I forgot to say that you can also use this multitasker brush for eyeliner. So I've used the Black Friday eyeliner here and just gone and drawn a quick wing across. I usually like to use my line brush for this with the spoolie on the other end. But again, if you're wanting to maximize the use out of your two brushes, this one and this one, this can also be used for your eyeliner. So another tip there. All right, that's it.